Hello and welcome to another episode of the Click Wars podcast. Jamie, what is going on, my man? How's it going, bro? Hello, mate. We just wrapped the John Dykstra episode. Obviously, John needs no introduction. He's crushed it. He's been scaling content for years. It was super interesting because there's just so few people that can speak from his experience because there's a lot of people who started websites. There's very few people who have done it for a decade and scaled to millions and millions. Uh, but also not just scaled to millions and millions, but having done it on like so many different platforms. So with like a wealth yeah. of knowledge on Pinterest, email, Facebook and, and the rest. Um, so with someone who's got such varied experiences, we had to ask about it all, right? We didn't go deep into anything. We just, it's, there's so much gold to be cleaned on so many different avenues to, honestly, I think we could, like, we spoke about you and Pinterest and like, per, like, because it's personal finance, whether that'd work and, um, some interesting thoughts. Like he was just, at one point he came up with some ideas for what you could do. And they were just like, I don't have a brain that thinks like that. He was just his yeah, eye, idea generation. Fire, he just came mm. up with like full, fully formed campaigns and uh, projects that you could have started for for Pinterest traffic. And so, is when you when you get uh, the chance to speak to John uh, and to pick his brain, you got to just ask all the things that you want to know. And he, like, and so we dotted around a bit, but I think it will be super interesting for listeners to know. You know, everything from Pinterest to email to push notifications to scaling to optimizing content to recovering from content hits to doing real life brick and mortar businesses so that was a pretty crazy one mm. uh and i thought it was great fun to be honest so i enjoyed it yeah let's get into it with big jd let's go <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Click Wars. We've got the man that really doesn't need any introduction. He's one of the biggest well-known people in the blogging space. He's been making ungodly amounts of money for years and years now and runs one of the most informative and like comprehensive courses in the space as well, which is uh, uh, which we'll get into more as well as a, an event that's coming up as well. So uh, thank you so much for your time, John. I appreciate that. And uh, it's great to have you on the on the podcast today. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, boy, that's a super nice intro. Uh, really, really glad to be here. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, man. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is something that like, I think it's, it's regained in popularity recently, um, is systems and Pinterest. And I know that Tony's been doing a great job talking about Pinterest as well. But uh, when I first learned about what I could do with Pinterest was from your course. And so I was just interested in, I guess, systems, um, I wanted to get, well, well, I've got some questions about fresh pins and how to just like you know, differentiate and then, uh, the sort of snowball effect from that and how likely it is to like, basically, okay. The first question, if you've been <laughs> pinning, I've, I've literally just railed and uh, we'll go, we'll go one at a time. Um, when <laughs> you've, uh, when you've been, <laughs> when you've been pinning for a while and you know, you have the sort of, uh, they just, they, the people talk about like a snowball effect where you can have pins that start compounding and they'll still be around in months and weeks ahead. What have you found from your own Pinterest, I guess, adventure for like the, the amount of sort of compounding that happens for, and the amount of traffic you're still driving from old pins as sort of the benefits of your like older work versus having to keep pinning new stuff to keep maintaining that traffic? Yeah, well, right now Pinterest is great, and so I'm I'm really going at it hard. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 really like Facebook. I started pinning years ago; it was great, and then it drops, and then it's great, and then it drops, and you sort of like you, my effort sort of echoes the the how much success you're getting with it. So I would say now, like definitely, pins in the last year or two are doing better than older pins. Uh, I mean, I. I you know, I, I get about 250, 300,000 website visits from Pinterest a month. So it's definitely been worth doing. Uh, but, you know, for anybody who's starting out here, keep in mind, I've, I've had that account for a number of years. I've got a lot of followers. Not that that I think helps a whole lot. But, you know, I just have a lot of content on Pinterest. But I think the good news is, is my more recent work is definitely the best performing work. So if you are getting started on Pinterest, it doesn't really take that long. Uh, I have systems in place like, you know, I actually read a blogger recently and she made an awesome point that Pinterest is is like ideal for bloggers and niche site publishers because it's all about the clicks to your website, like contrasted with Instagram. I'm not knocking Instagram. I think Instagram's cool and it's great for users and you could build great business with it, but it's not easy to get visitors from Instagram to your website. 
And if your if your revenue is based on eyeballs on your site, Pinterest is got to be one of the best out there. And so that like hit home. I mean, it's obvious. It's such an obvious thing, but yeah, it's such a great way to put it. So I'm bullish on Pinterest. It's been really great lately, and you know I've got systems in place. Um, you know, I train VAs. You could train people on Pinterest fairly easily, especially with ChatGPT now. Like I'm. I'm I'm not a you know for website content and emails I I I use AI for ideas and that sort of thing and some text but when it comes to Pinterest it's a lot of AI and it works really really well. So what's that system like and um, like how how much invest I guess in like what team size do you need to to be able to drive those kinds of like three hundred thousand a month for? I I have one person doing it full time. That's it. One VA and I trained her like I spent. When, when AI came out, I was pretty slow to embrace it. But when ChatGPT4 came out, and then uh, Koala as well, which also worked off uh, for, um, then I was like, okay, I this is usable, not, not 100%, it doesn't replace human writing, but this is usable and I can use it. And probably the best uh, use of it is for me is Pinterest. So I spent about a week you know, I, I cover certain topics within my niche and they tend to do best on Pinterest. So I focus on those. And so basically I spent a week coming up with a system. How could I hand this over to somebody who um, has never done Pinterest before and she hadn't? <laughs> I trained her from scratch. And the other thing that was really important to me is I've noticed I get slightly better performance scheduling in Pinterest native scheduler, which sucks because it's not nearly as user friendly as most of other social social media schedulers. Like it, it's, I don't know why Facebook and Pinterest just can't create a super cool scheduler, but they don't. But I got better better performance from it with Pinterest native scheduler. So I trained her on that and that's what she uses. And so I'm not, you know, I'm not a, too much of a stickler about like, it's gotta be every 20 minutes spaced apart or anything. We just get them out there. It's like it's my same MO with blog content. Just, I don't believe in drip scheduling and all that nonsense. Like. Let's get it out there. Let's get it next. Let's get it making money. So that's how we, that's how I run pins. I tell her when you're done a pin, post, post, post. So we're doing high volume. She's embraced ChatGPT. She's really smart. Like she's definitely one of the one of the best hires I've had, and she's running away with it. And I check it every week and doing a great job. Nice. And um, for ChatGPT, are you willing to share? A prompt that or a, no. any of the sort of... <laughs> <laughs> no you know what <laughs> you know the thing is, the thing is with prompting it's like i don't I, I know some people come up with super clever stuff and you know i i keep it i keep it pretty so I'll, I'll leave it at that it's sort of like basically um the, the trick is more in terms of you you've got to train the i had to train my va on how to prompt and how to input the the main words, what the pin is about, and figure that out. Once you got that, the, the actual prompt itself, it's sort of like write a two sentence Pinterest description for. But then the the trick is for them to actually come up with the right words with what that pin is about, so that it'll spit out the proper. Um, like I said, she, she's actually a really talented person, um, so she actually like can fix mistakes and everything. It's not like we're just blindly pinning. She writes really well in English and, and is, and so um, that, that's why it's working. And in how many, the, sorry, go, go on, on Jay. Go. I was just going to say like, in terms of where you're sending these pins, is it into article based or is it mainly homepage? How, how's, how's that structured? Uh, to individual articles. I don't set anything to homepage. Everything's to an independent ah. article. And how many pins like, are you pinning per article and per like month total? Oh, per month, jeez, a thousand. Wow, I think. Okay. Wow. I, I don't okay, even wow. know what she's doing. I sort of check check her work. Like, we're doing really high volume right now, and it hasn't been an issue. But please, you know, if you got a brand new account, I probably, from what I've heard from people, probably not best to like start rifling out 50, thirty to fifty a day. Uh, that, that's just anecdotal. I don't know. I've had this account for so long. Um, so I, I can blast out like lots and it's not an issue. They're, they're all good. They're all, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to like game Pinterest or anything like that. We're really like, I create specific boards and we do good descriptions and the pin is 
anything we write about a pin, it's reflected in the article we're linking to, you know, I mean, it's just keeping it really straightforward. And how do you decide how many pins you're going to like make out of an article? Is it just, does it present itself based on the content and the images in the content or like what can like make that vary? Well, yeah, every niche is different. I'm in a very visual niche. And so a lot of the content are, is images. And so that sort of helps. And so in, in my case, it's quite a few pins per article. And not every niche is going to be like that. Like if, you know, like, let's say um, I was in the, in the dog niche and it was an article about, I don't know, dog food. I, I don't even know if that would work on Pinterest. Maybe it would. But I mean, how many images are you going to get that's relevant and interesting about that um, versus mine? I'm, I'm not going to go into details, but it's a very visual niche and there are a lot of images for every post and they're different and it, it works on Pinterest. And so like, for example, Sammy's in personal finance, which is a less visual, like naturally niche. If he was trying to really supercharge Pinterest, what would you like, give advice for him? Nice one. <laughs> uh, you know, definitely kick off. Like I know my niche so well, I don't have to do this for the most part, which is like keyword research on Pinterest. I mean, I, I just know what I'm doing, but that's after being in the niche for 10 years. But so personal finance, if it were me, which is relatively new, I would do Pinterest keyword research big time just to see what sort of topics people are interested in on Pinterest for personal finance. And then I, you know, my, my guess would be like pretty interesting, like graphics, almost like infographics or charts or um, go the budget. I think budgeting is like a big thing, but budgeting from yeah. interesting angles, you know, like for a specific audience for like maybe, maybe single moms or families with six kids. I mean, all these sort of like different angles you could, you could take. And then maybe you could even create a whole board that would be sort of like the storyboard almost with, you know, you've got your, your data and your charts and all that, but then, you know, you could have, uh, you know, saving for uh, a, a brand new family automobile minivan or some tips to do that. And then, so you've got this cool minivan <laughs> pen or something. Section. I mean, yeah. you know, you want to, that, that's what people would want, I would think, but it would boil down to keyword research. I also think Pinterest is not ideal for every niche. So if I were in personal mm -hmm. finance, would I invest time and money on Pinterest? I probably actually wouldn't. You know, the idea is I'm spitting out here is like if, if you had to, I, I really think probably your time and money's better spent elsewhere, really, like YouTube, uh, Twitter, probably, you know, where, where the people are hanging out. Google search, of course, is good for everything. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. That's actually gold. Cool. Those like ideas you were saying were just like that's actually just so clever. I haven't thought about it like that before. That was really good. I've, I've uh, thank been you trying for that. exactly what you said, John, and it, it's it's a it's slow. It is slow. You know, we're doing one or two pins a day at the moment, but it is creeping up. If you look at the charts, it's the same as like when you start a YouTube channel or a podcast. It's like this slow creep and. We're going to plan to because we're basically putting infographics. We're, these these graphics were already made, so to like spit them back out in Canva and resize them is a you know for a VA is a thirty sec second to one minute job just to make it look like resize it and then you know writing the descriptions and pinning it up isn't a long process. It's a 10, 10 minute per pin sort of thing um, to repurpose it. So we're going to try it, see how it goes. But I agree with you. It's more like. You hear so many great things about Pinterest, and but it is so niche specific. But when you do go on there, there is a lot of personal finance guys that have got like twenty, thirty thousand followers and seem to be driving oh. pins. So you know it, it, it must work for some of them. So we'll try it, see how it goes. But um, yeah, I was listening to um, I had a quick listen to um, one of your previous podcasts, and one of the things that I noticed about um that I thought was really cool. At the time, you were buying a bricks and mortar business to match up to your niche website. Um, and you were just about to kick this off when I um, when I, when I uh, listened to this podcast. So um, how's it going? Have you done it? And is it up and running? And yeah, how's it, has, it, has it helped? Uh, has it been a nightmare? What's, <laughs> what's the deal? <laughs> um, I did it. We are in business. We have made money. Uh, we're not profitable. This type of business is not like the uh, invest five bucks in hosting like a, a niche site and, <laughs> and you're profitable after, you know, pretty quickly. This is a different thing, but uh, I anticipated that. Um, and, you know, I think if we keep going where we're going, we'll be profitable next year, which is awesome. 
I'm very happy about that because the collateral benefits for me and, and, you know, collateral reasons I did this was exactly it bolsters my actual niche site. It's like mm. perfectly aligned. The two are helping each other. I, I still am just merely scratching the surface in terms of like leveraging that and working it together. Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about that and I'm testing certain things. Uh, but the, the longer it's been, uh, especially now that we're generating some revenue, uh, I'm uh, no regrets. Like it was a really good decision to do. I've learned an absolute ton. I'm going to a, a industry conference, probably the most important one of the year in October. I'm going to, you know, the, the access I'll get, which is only available to um, people who own a business in this it's for professionals. You know, that that's huge, right? I wouldn't have had that mm -hmm. otherwise. And And there's lots of these things. So, I have learned a ton. I just have to, you know, sort of put it all together and really this this is the next phase of my niche site. I just haven't fulfilled that. I've actually spent I will say this, it's a lot more work than I expected. <laughs> like okay, you know, I, is it? I don't know, man. I've been I've been in the online world. It's sort of like, hmm, I like that niche. Start a website and it's it's done and uh, you know, from then on it's hire writers or whatever, you know. This was like like red tape and bureaucracy and and just all sorts of things I haven't really ever had Inspections, to deal with. taxation, it's wild. Yeah, a whole new bank account and a whole just everything just gearing it all up. Like I know in my blogging business, I did it in very tiny steps over the years, you know, like and, and this was just like just all done at one time. And so mm. I, I, it, 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 it took me away from the blogging business for longer than I expected. In terms mm. of the SEO play there, you've got the local SEO play clearly because of it's a fixed location. How does that work when you've got such a wide SEO play with the actual niche site? Well, the, the local site, it's, it's geared strictly toward our region you know, to a handful of cities. Um, and that's it. And so I'm actually working with a local SEO person. It's not really my wheelhouse because there's a whole bunch of aspects to local SEO that's foreign to me and just don't really have the time or the interest to deal with that. So I'm getting some help with that. But I, I don't foresee, it. well, I mean, let's say I, I do take two spots on Google search because of the two sites. Uh, I'd be happy. I'm not complaining about that, but that's not my intent. <laughs> I'm really targeting regions for our, you know, our main keywords really, and just going with that. And how do you balance the, um, cause obviously you've got both your sites and you've got the course, both of which are separate businesses. And so you have to balance your time. How are you now balancing your time between the sites, brick and mortar business and the courses? And how has that distribution changed? Yeah, that's changed a lot. Okay, so the local biz is pretty much set up and running. I, I launched it with the intention of hiring a designer to run it. And um, she agreed even before I did it. So, you know, that was that plan was in place. She she runs it. She's exceptional. And so it's her it's her thing. I just deal with um, hiring people to do the marketing. Um, I don't even do the marketing myself. I sort of I did set up the site initially. But that's done. Like I said, I, I did spend, uh, you know, a couple of months really getting the wheels in motion. But now that it's done, I've got an agency to help with the SEO. I've got people to run the business and so forth. So that doesn't take much time. Uh, in terms of like balancing between um, fat stacks and my niche sites, well, I'm really only focusing on one niche site right now. And it's the same niche site in the industry of my local business. And, and that was an intentional decision. I'm going all in on that. and I think that's going to be worthwhile in the long run. Uh, I'm probably going to get just more and more and more involved in certain aspects. But at the same time, I've also brought on an agency to help with other aspects that need improvement and that are really not something I'm terribly good at, which is namely technical SEO, like a lot of stuff under the hood that I've just never really dealt with. I mean, I, I know enough to know there are problems. <laughs> And they're really time consuming to fix. I don't want to deal with it. So, you, you know, basically at the end of the day, short answer, I, I try to hire the best people I can to just help as much as possible in these areas. Um, I've got a lot of help with fat stacks. I don't talk about that. I don't say who they're in the background, but I got a ton of help and that's huge. 
really more and more I do this is I just want to focus on what I, what my strengths are. And so it's like two yeah. different niches and content creation within those niches. Nice. And um, how have you managed? And uh, yeah. this is such an open-ended question again, because it is like a, a broad one, but you've managed to scale enormous amounts of content over years and years how have you managed to maintain quality if like for example you may not be editing or have your hands on every piece of content and so this is something i ask a lot of people because i am the bottleneck and i'm trying to find the the like i i, I'm, I have to prize the the site's content out of my dead hands because i'm just unable to give up on this and so how did you manage to let go how did you manage to keep the standards high to be able to scale this with more content going out and, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a great question. It's something that's been hard. I, um, content updating is like actually more important now than new content. I mm -hmm. went on a content binge for years. Like it was just like con more content, more content. I I failed to update along the way as I should have. So now I pay the piper, and so I am. So I started doing it, and then I hired some writers directly to start doing it, and now I've got an agency actually doing it <laughs> who can scale um much better than i can who have better sops in place to do it and so i think they're going to do a really really good job and that's my mo right now and i know i mean i, I know people who create their own systems you know like ann moss i mean her her organization is awesome like her yeah, her super yeah. her super strength is like creating these super efficient organizations to scale and that's just not me and so i have to basically like hand it to a third party to to take over because i'm just not really interested in overseeing that but it is getting done i've slowed tremendously on new content focusing on a huge like this agency like was like man we got so many keywords that you know you're hanging out at you know position five position six position ten like a little bit of um, elbow grease and boom, potentially two and one, right? So nice. got DR 75. Uh, and so that's the MO probably going to be for like realistically two years. The, the, you know, I, I, you know, I know Jamie, you've been working on this. It's not like these, these sites become like oil tankers, you know, you can just can't turn them on a dime. <laughs> that's, um, another, that's really interesting that you've actually managed to find an agency because, uh, that can like optimize and maintain rather than just put new stuff out there that's really interesting because i think that's a big problem that most people don't talk about is that when you mature you have these assets but they turn into liabilities as they get out of date and they have to be uh you know brought to be relevant and to to maintain the traffic they were getting for me i've barely published much new stuff it's literally just especially when we got hit so so badly yeah. in the updates that we only recently recovered from and so it just became a big optimization play yeah, it's almost, I was thinking about it this morning because I'm working with this agency. I, I did my, you know, they, they, we have honed the process that they're going to use for it. They're actually training some of my VAs, which is really cool. So it's like, it's going to be this mass, massive effort. It's not inexpensive, but I was thinking it's sort of like, you know, owning these sites, which I've now owned for 10 years and it's grown into a sizable site and it does not perform as well as it should. And I've come to that realization for certain. And it's, it's sort of like a professional sports team, you know, you, you have these winning years and then it's like, boom, time to rebuild. And, you know, it's like these cycles. And, I, and I've seen that now I've been around the block for uh, a number of years. And so this is definitely like rebuilding time. On that note, um, for example, for me, I got hit fairly badly a few months back and we recently recovered it. And I've spoken on some newsletters and stuff about the things I did. Um, when you've been focused on optimizing, recovering, getting traffic back up, what was what were your main points that you searched for to go and think? Where can we be better? What can we so? How can we get like to the maximum positions and maximize the traffic? Well, it's sort of like a three pronged thing, basically. That that's I've actually just went all over this with the with the agency. That gets a, it's a holistic thing, really. And I've always known that. So I mean, you got your technical aspects, right? Site speed possibly um, redirect errors, just errors, errors, errors that are just sort of dragging your site down. And a site my size, it's sizable, lots, there were errors. Now it wasn't like obscene, but there was one glaring error. And it, I mean, it was just, 
I, I can't believe I didn't spot it, but it impacted 411 articles. And so they, they spotted it, the agency found it and it was like, it's an one hour fix, you know, and this has been in place for a long time. I didn't even notice it, but I always wondered why these, these articles used to, I produced 400 of them. They're all very similar in concept. And I did those because they were super effective. They work like gang, they got a lot of traffic. All of a sudden there's no more traffic. And I, so basically I hired two writers to actually work on these 400 articles are still doing it, make them better. And now it's probably because of the stupid technical error. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> At least my fingers are crossed. We'll see. Right. But so stuff like that, site speed for sure. I mean, I've gotten a little bit lazy on that. A um, lot, a lot of redirects. Then there's internal linking. There's for me, there's always room improvement for that. So we've identified a lot of opportunities there to try to help that out. Uh, and then, and then looking at like, okay, well, what's the strategy for going for my, my year one with this whole thing is let's go, let's try to increase traffic as fast as possible going after the easiest wins. That's it. After that, then we can maybe think about long-term strategy, where we're going to take the site. But right now there's got to be a ton of easy wins that we could do. And there are. So really it boils down to a lot of keywords ranking position five, six, they haven't been updated for six years. Um, maybe they don't have any internal links pointing to them or only one, you know, these sorts of things, right, that you just dive in and make those fixes. So that's the MO. It's really boiled down to um, we, we identified five categories that perform reasonably well, but also have high RPMs from ads. So we're going to get most bang for a buck. And then within those categories, we identified the the keywords that are sitting in spots, you know, well, any spot, but number one. <laughs> That's really cool. So you, so you, so you, so you're, you're looking at it from a, a quick win process, which is great because you, you know, you've got, you've got them there. They're already in the SERP, so you can pull them up. That's amazing. Are you adding things to this article as well? Like, are you looking at the FAQs? What have they changed? Uh, any new custom images or things, other things oh. that you can bring in? Definitely custom images. That's going to be massive. I've always actually done a really good job with images. In fact, images has been like this, a foundation of the site. So there's not a whole lot to tweak there, except, you know, me maybe getting more of more of my own original um, rather than sourcing from other professionals within the industry. Uh, yeah, aside from that, like the whole FAQ thing, I never really pursued that. So I never did actually like score lots of traffic from the people also ask i never i did the whole schema faq thing i don't know why i just just never bothered so it's not really something i'm working on i, I just want to rank more content in the in the normal serps going forward nice and so with this process obviously you know there's uh we were talking to nina captain the other day and she was saying that she's um using ai to help her identify what's missing from these articles as well. Are you using AI in any of, any of this process? Possibly. If I am, it's up to the agency to do it. I'm sort of, <clears throat> they, I've merely glossed over the process talking to you guys. Like they have this massive long SOP that they've honed and used. Um, this agency has a lot of success in the backgrounds why I chose them. So I'm sort of leaving that stuff to them. That's okay. fair enough. And um, so you used to be a big supporter of like the writer access style ways of, uh, of scaling content. Have you moved away from that to the agency side? Is it, is it because of AI or like what's the motivation? Mm, I use writer. See, I'm not producing a whole lot of new content right now. <laughs> yeah. Writer access was great for that. Uh, I, there are, I do still place, orders now and then with writer access. The agency is, well, you'll be happy to hear, Jamie, we're also doing some affiliate stuff, which I've hey. never <laughs> really pursued hard. But we're, we're, we're going to publish some of that too and see how, how it can perform on the site. We're starting slow. Um, so yeah, that's really, I guess, the agency is sort of taking it all over. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, best of luck with the affiliate stuff. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. I'm happy to have a look over and see if there's anything that I, anything I see is, uh, yeah. Just for everyone listening, by the way, John is a Lasso customer and we're very happy to have him. Just a quick plug there to, to stick that in there. <laughs> I do like Lasso a lot. I've tried a lot of them. I, I like it. 
Thank you for the. Uh, we're going to soundbite that and stick that everywhere. That's the uh, the, the the quote <laughs> that we're taking. <laughs> um, let's talk about the event. Um, thank you so much. By the way, you uh, you DM to me fairly recently talking about a niche site summit that was going to happen with uh, a bunch of speakers. Um, I'm going. I'm on there. I'm going to be on there. What? How did that come together? How did you come up with the idea? What's the plan? Have you thought like, yeah, introduce it to us? Yeah, well, thanks for uh, asking me about that. And thanks for presenting. Uh, you were one of the first people I contacted. Uh, boy, that that wasn't my idea. Uh, that was a person who is helping who has been working on fat sacks behind the scenes for over a year now. He's been wanting to do this for a long time. And so I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. Let's give a shot. Uh, I've, I've got to say it's been more fun than I expected. I think it's going to be a bigger success than I expected. And I think like he deserves all the credit for coming up with the idea and the execution and everything. And so um, I'm, I'm most happy about the lineup we we're able to get. Like almost everyone I asked was like, yeah, I'm in love to do it. And that that's, and, and it's not a small ask. It's, it's not like a, like a three minute soundbite we're asking for. These are 30 to 40 minute presentations that go in depth on a, on, on topics. And that I recognize that's a, that's a lot of work. I'm doing one too. So I know, <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I think it's going to be a great opportunity for people just getting started. I think there's going to be topics for people who have been doing this for a number of years and have a certain amount of success. I think there's really something for, for everyone. And uh, I'm really excited to, to basically host this thing. Nice. And um, when oh, I, I was, oh, was going to skip over it, but I'm going to ask how many signups you got so far on it? How's it looking? In terms of registrants? Yeah. Oh, right now? Uh, well, we just started last week, we got just under 1000. Um, nice. I maybe a bit more I haven't haven't checked super recently. Uh, but you know, I think I haven't even emailed about it yet. I think I mentioned it Twitter, I, I know some presenters have mentioned it, which is awesome, too. So, you know, I think it's going to be um, I get a lot of people are going to be interested. In it. I mean, it's free, right? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you, yeah. it's October 24, 25, I should, I should say the name. It's the fat sacks niche site summit. Uh, it's October 24, 25 will be the, be the, the free version. You have to register and then attend then. Um, if you want the recordings to have like in your library of materials, you just got to pay for those. Nice. Um, who's, who's on the lineup? I, I know you two clearly, but uh, yeah. <laughs> who, who else is making the bill? Uh, yeah, we got um, Scott DeLong. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, oh, which which is, for that. I just met Scott in the last year. And we've emailed a little bit. And I've, I've been a huge fan of his uh, 500K challenge that he just wrapped yeah, up. I mean, oh, what, what an absolute awesome series that was. So I'm yeah. super excited to have him. He's actually going to talk about the challenge. I think that that would be a super fun presentation. Oh, cool. Uh, we got Chris Rempel. I don't know. You have to be around for a while. I used to run the lazy, uh, lazy marketer, <laughs> and uh, oh, he, yeah, he then kind of the stopped that for a while. Yeah. He, he re he relaunched that, and uh, so I've known him. His product was the first product I ever made a nickel off, like using it and making money. So that was pretty cool. Anyways, he's presenting Spencer Haas. Uh, yeah. Mark Webster from Authority Hacker. Nice, yeah, love Mark. We got quite a few people. Sorry, I'm just trying to look that up. I got a bad memory. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got and we got a few more not listed on the on the site. If you go to nichesitesummit.com, you'll see it. But um, boy, uh, Tony Tony Hill. Like I've known yeah. Tony now a little while. This this guy is like. He's kind of lighting up Twitter right now and yeah. his email, uh, super popular. John Gillum, uh, oh, Keith nice. Mint, Ann Moss, Jared Bauman. I'll go on and check out niche, uh, Fat Sacks and Niche Site Summit. You, you, you see them all there. Yeah, that's going to be insane. What a day. I'm, I'm really impressed that, like, I've just, I just assumed that we'd never get like a proper talk from, and I don't know, I don't think he knows who I am, but I'm a big fan of Scott DeLong's, like, the, the stuff that he was doing in that challenge and just talking about and emailing oh. about was absolute gold dust. Like, I very rarely I'll read co or listen to content nowadays and think, like, right, I need to get the notebook out and start like drumming this and tattooing it on my brain. He's one of the rare people that reinvigorated, like, how I was thinking about brand and like 
doing and you know and growing and scaling like different like methods so i'm excited because he's mentioned like on some of his like blog posts being like a big introvert so i'm i'm impressed that you got, <laughs> got him got him to do this yeah he, he talks about that a lot i was actually i kind of emailed him on the whim i didn't really have any expectations because i mean he's always you know he's always flown under the radar all these years you know he started viral nova which was a monster site back in the day super successful uh but i thought you know i've I just saw what the heck, maybe he'll be interested. And sure enough, he was like, yeah, I'm in. And uh, so it was very it's happy. It's a nice way for him to like talk about it and kind of relive the experience from a, you know, a bit more of a settled perspective, I suppose, rather than it being so current. I, oh yeah, for sure. He, he is going to focus on the challenge, not really any of his past sites or successes. Um, I, I think at least, yeah, I mean, Anyway, I'm I'm interested because he hasn't really, you know, presented. I don't think that I know of anywhere. So this will be this will be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, that challenge was like. I, I mean, I know he didn't hit the 500k mark, but he he got super close in one yeah. year, which is nuts, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. crazy. With just the 20k as well, it's like whoa. That's right. Isn't, I keep forgetting about yeah. the 20k. I'm sure if he yeah. didn't have that restriction. It's, it's, it's the it. ad play, which was so impressive, like the the way he built that newsletter base to then like reinvigorate. Mm -hmm. He basically didn't really rely on SEO at all. There was hardly any SEO in there at all, really, until they, right at the end, yep. we saw a little uptick, which is so interesting. I think that's um, the way to build brands nowadays, to be honest, like the social co uh, and like everything else, build a real brand. And then the SEO will come along with that. Like, uh, I'll tell you guys off camera what like uh, my plan is for this. But I think honestly, the reverse acquisition into SEO is like the, the back end is the future of these because they're just real brands that will survive. But in basically what you're you're doing to an extent, John, with the real brick and mortar stuff. And obviously you mentioned uh, that using that as a, as a way, I guess, for the EAT side as well. But I honestly think we'll see more and more of that. And the more and more I see of like real businesses that are winning on affiliate keywords, the more and more I think that this is going to be the way that this goes. Yeah, you know, you know, I think um, Niche Site Lady observed that a lot of brands are cleaning up in SERPs for topics bloggers used to cover more thoroughly. And I, I totally see the frustration because a lot of brands just sort of do a cursory coverage of a particular topic. So I totally get that. And actually, I was doing some research earlier this morning um, within my niche, and it was like so many local websites in the niche offering the services are ranking for stuff that the, that used to rank just your your run of the mill blogs in the space. So something's happening there. Um, it's like right on point, Jamie, in terms of the whole brand behind it and the you know I guess perceived authority and expertise because you're an actual real business in the space. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of like services, like for example, graphic design firms that are. I'm not sure if they're real graphic design firms, but they are presenting as such and then just destroying it on like software keywords at the moment which i'm seeing yeah um, and i think there's a lot of that going on like for example i've seen um other stuff in my niches where it's been like maybe they're not real companies they're just they're just clever affiliates but i'm seeing a lot more of that now <laughs> it's uh, uh <laughs> it's the it's the play now i think <laughs> yeah yeah um can i ask about push notifications Sure, I don't really do them anymore. <laughs> oh, fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can ask. Um, what was the? Uh, why'd you stop? Man, I've I've tried them on and off over the years, and it's always one of those. Uh, it's a tough call every time because they do drive traffic, and it's easy traffic, and it adds up, and I don't know. It, it, and then, but then you know when I run them, and you. And I see it's always it's always email or the push. It's hard to like focus on both, right? Because you got the box to get the subscribers, but I don't want both that box and an email sign up box to pop up. So I'm like always back and forth between push, email, push, email. I'm doing focusing on email now, so I I remove the 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 push stuff. I um, mean, just pushes were weird. Like it's I hit this I hit the ceiling, and then it doesn't grow. And so like, I'll hit, I'll get to like 600 to a thousand visits a day from the traffic. 
no matter how many I'm sending out or any change in strategy, I hit the ceiling and then that's where it's stuck at. No matter how many new subs I get to the push, it's just, that's it. And so, because like, if I were growing to like 10,000 visitors a day to my site and then 20 and so forth, I'd be like hundred percent bullish on it. I'd be all over push, but it's just not how it plays out. Mm. So if you did decide to go with email over that, if it had to be one or the other, what kind of um, frequency are you emailing your list at? And like, what's the ratio from like, I guess, value to maybe affiliate selling uh, on, on that front for email? Well, email is a disappointment too. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been testing push uh, for, for the niche. Uh, I've, you know, I've talked about this for years. I've had a hard time. to. I don't have a hard time getting subscribers. I don't even have a hard time getting a decent open rate, like 40 plus percent. The clicks to the site are usually disappointing. I, I got like 50,000 subscribers. I can get like three to 4,000 visitors to the site or page views to the site per email, which is not bad, right? It's not terrible. Um, with a 30 RPM, the, the revenue is okay. Um, what's disappointing is aside from that ad revenue to the site, can't make money in the newsletter. And I've tried like everything. And so I still do it. Ideally, I do it once a day, but I, I haven't been lately. Um, I've just been so busy with something else. But when I'm in the swing of it, and I'll, I'll send one out a day, which isn't nice. a problem. My, my open rates remain stable at one a day. It, that has no impact. Have you tried doing direct sponsorships to place them <laughs> in, in, in themselves like because if you have such a large list surely you could command a decent sponsorship fee yeah uh, no I, I yeah i i switched over to beehive for that list just because it's way cheaper for uh, you know that volume of subscribers and um so so beehive is perfect for it. they even have like an in-house like sponsorship network and they've emailed me and they're like let's run this let's run that you get paid per click for their on their ads and i think like the best one was like 120 bucks 150 bucks um which is okay it's not terrible um but it's a lot of setup and again you know i was able to train someone to do it but now i'm paying someone to do all this and not really making a whole ton from it i don't know it's it's one of those like close call things i keep doing it but it's not a massive success hmm and for the display ad model there's obviously a lot of talk about third party cookies and the tracking and this like people are speculating it could affect rpms um whether that transpires i don't know um how are you building that into your plan because you're very info content focused and like what's your plan for i guess making sure that it's like not an issue for when the cookies are taken away in 2024 yeah, yeah. i don't have a plan I, you know i've got the emails um we're just gonna have to see what happens don't, I, I, I honestly don't know. I, I get emailed all the time. What do you think? Like, how bad is it going to be? I don't know. I, I really don't. I, I, I mean, the optimist in me is like, well, I'm fairly niche. So that's somewhat of a, an attractive aspect to potential advisor, uh, advertisers. But I, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I've, re I've read various. I mean, some people are saying it'll be better. I don't know. <laughs> Most people say it's probably going to hurt. <laughs> I, uh, I've heard a lot of people getting worried and saying that they're getting worried. So I'm like, as I'm refreshed by your, like not worriedness, it fills me with optimism <laughs> for it. And I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> I, well, mean, I think it's one of those things that all will always innovate. Like there'll be ways around these things. They'll, they'll, they'll come up with a new way that's around this law that they can try and serve these things to the right people they're going to have to otherwise these businesses are they're not going to go bust yeah I, I i really don't know i mean i i guess like if you look at ad revenue from safari and apple devices it's usually definitely lower than chrome right because they oh, don't sure. have the, yeah. they don't have the tracking on there will it be as well but i mean like google's talking about alternative tech in place to have some level of tracking so I don't, I don't know. You know, it's beyond me, really. Um, I just carry on. I love this business model. Uh, my, my solution to almost everything is more traffic. I think more traffic makes up for, for that to an extent. 
But Jamie, I'll do some affiliate stuff too. I'm working on it. <laughs> Can we go into that quickly about strategies for that? Is the agency doing that as well, or are you yeah. doing that more in-house? The agencies can do affiliate as well. Yeah, they haven't nice. published one yet. We're just getting started, and I'll see what it see what it is. I, I've nice. I don't know. You know, it's like I just don't have that affiliate brain. I'm not very good at CRO. I'm not like I'm a writer. You know, I, I, I've even I've even written reviews about products I've used and buy and really love within the niche and just never really made a whole ton of money on it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just not my wheelhouse, but we'll see what the agency does with it. So, John, obviously, you mentioned you're not going for new articles at the moment. And but then you have been an advocate for your koala writers and your chat GTV. You know, you said it's usable. Why, why would you not do both at the same time? Um, really, for, well, I am publishing some new content, um, just not even close to the volume I used to do. Um, really, I'm looking at gaps within current clusters and filling some of those, but it's, it's pretty slow. I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot of my time working on getting the YouTube channel going. I'm, I might even try oh, cool. videos, uh, which asked me three years ago was like never going to happen. But it, it, <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking into it and I'm trying to come up with strategies. So I'm pretty distracted with that. I do publish some new content and I think the agency is going to definitely be publishing some new content um, for some of my other smaller sites. That's where the sort of working with koalas come in handy when I want to add content to that. Um, I like working it together with chat GPT. I've heard good things about Claude, except I'm in Canada, so I can't use it. I'm not oh. quite inclined to get a VPN to try. I don't know. It's I, excellent. It's better yeah. than chat GPT, in my opinion. It's cleaner. It reasons better. And I think it writes yeah. better. Yeah, it's I, more emotional. I've, I've heard all that. I just, uh, I don't know why I'm in Canada, man. I just, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a good, it's a good top. It's a good one to check out. If you can get a little VPN on it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for, um, I, I, this is the only question I've got written down that I didn't get to fact check and verify if it was definitely you. I'm not sure if I'm misremembering. Did you attend the media find summit for like the only the top earners? Oh yeah. Yeah. That was last uh, October last year. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I didn't misremember then. I've got, I can ask this question then. <laughs> so um, you, I think one of the takeaways that you mentioned at the time was that like the uber successful people typically focus on a single site rather than a portfolio. Uh, is there anything else that's as characteristic amongst super successful people that people listening to this could like adopt or think about? Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would also say um, embracing the influencer approach. Most of the people that had these, that were there, they're the face of their brand. They're the face of their site. They'll be there on YouTube, they're on Instagram, they're on. Now keep in mind, a lot of them are food bloggers. So that's a particular type of niche, right? That's how Mediavine got started was food bloggers. So a lot of the people there were, but even, even outside of the whole food thing, they were the face of their site. It was, it was them. Um, and so, you know, versus your, you know, your Condé Nast and, uh, dot dash sites, which are, you know, massive publications, which is a successful model as well. But definitely, I would say so many of the people there, they, they were everything, they sort of, they did the whole, you know, recycled their content, they wrote a blog post, they would do a video, they post on, it's like, it was almost like their life, but, you know, mm -hmm. focused within their particular niche. So yeah, I mean, one site, they're the brand, they're the site, like they're out there. I like mm. hearing that. That's that's <laughs> that's got remnants of me all over. So uh, I'm, I'm I like hearing that. I, I want to be in that top club. <laughs> well, you're you're a, you're a sure shoe in them. There you go. I'm, I'm coming for it. I'm coming for it. Might take a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving toward that too. Uh, I I had made that decision the year ago when I met a lot of these folks. But I think for me, it's sort of like it's hard to be the dot dash. Mm. You have to hire people who are going to write for that. And I think it's totally, totally doable. But I just have this gut feeling like for me, it's the way I've set things up um, for my niche, I think 
getting more of an influencer aspect to it is a good idea. Yeah, it's an ecosystem the way I look at it. Uh, you know, that all feeds into one central hub, which is your website. And it, it, it then if you have affiliates in there, ads on there, you are monetizing multiple traffic sources. You can build email lists. You can, um, you know, do anything you want with those video aspects too. So you, you're just adding more strings to the bow, uh, more authority. Um, and it, it just really does make a lot of sense when you do think about it like that. Yeah, totally agree. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. It's just, it's a lot of work. Yeah, oh, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, yeah, it's an absolute ball ache, my friend. Yeah, but uh, yeah. You, you know, actually, it's not the work; it's the decisions that have to be made. What strategy are you going to do? Where, where are you going to focus? Yeah. You know, come up with these decisions. What, what can I do best? Right, like, let's say I, I, I'd, I'd love to get a whole video thing going for, but you know, I'm a noob in the vid video arena, and so what approach should I focus on? What style of video should I make? What, what are going to be the best? Uh, am I going to be the best video maker on YouTube? No, I'm, it's never going to happen. Could it be good enough? Yeah, I think I could do it good enough. But I have some big decisions to make before then. It's the same with your blogs though, man. You first wrote your blog, your first five videos, they're going to be shit. So just get up <laughs> if you can get past that. Like, yeah. you're all right. Like, Very it's well. just one of those things, man. It's, and you'll look back at them in a few years' time and be like, what was I doing? Just the no. same as like your first blog and you have the heebie-jeebie moment. Like, oh, look at me, man. But, I know, right? You know, like, <laughs> it's just fun at the end of the day. As long as you have fun with it, that's all we're here to do, yeah. right? You know, so... I like that yeah, spirit. A hundred percent with you there, Sammy. How you like that? That's awesome. Got to remember that. Yeah. Mm, for sure. Uh, for the so content update. Uh, sorry, Jake. Go on. Sorry. Sorry. Um, for the content updates that you're, you've got the agency doing, I ask this question a lot because a lot of talk at the moment, and I've personally found success from it. Other people like Jared Bowen have spoken about it. Especially Thomas Jepson, who I've learned a lot from this from, is a like in terms of helpful content, people talk about a percentage of unhelpful content sort of triggering, maybe demoting you a tier and then getting uh, visibility decreases as a result and therefore increasing the amount of like green flag content versus red flag content. No idea if this is how it's actually done, but there's speculation. People like Jared saying that they've deleted content and seen recoveries and growth from there. Did, uh, uh, it, uh, as part of any of the maintaining, did the agency go, let's delete XYZ posts or was there no deletions at all? Yes, but I would say it's probably very, very conservative number and going to proceed very slowly with that. Um, perhaps may convert. I always just put content into a draft. I keep it. You never know for a rainy day. Um, but yeah, that is probably something going to happen. It's just a how much. Probably not a whole lot. How did you decide when you were deleting the stuff? What was the criteria? Well, I just deleted. Uh, I haven't even written about this yet. Uh, so breaking news for you guys, except <laughs> the only reason I'm not talking about it is I don't know if it was good or bad. I've got no no results at all to speak of. So, uh, But I deleted um, two full categories that were a, a gamble in the beginning, but I did them because if they would have worked, they would have been a big success, but they were total failures. But the kicker was it was like 1800 articles and they were not cheap articles. Like these were Ooh. like photos, paid for photos, paid for like, um, like it was how to's tutorials that they actually did. Like it was a lot of money. And the, the biggest mistake wasn't going into these categories because I think it was worth trying. The biggest mistake was I should have stopped a long time ago, right? Wow. <laughs> Why did I go to that distance? But I, in all fairness, one category was a total dud, like zero traffic, and, and I spent a ton of time and money on it. Uh, the other one actually did get a lot of traffic. So that was harder to decide whether to remove, but it wasn't a good fit with the site. So you ask about whether... I've deleted content that I did this on my own a few months ago. There's no impact on the agency. I made a decision. I think these two categories got to go. And I actually consulted a lot of people who do SEO about this, like a lot before. And most people are like, no, I think you'd keep it, especially the one getting traffic. They're like, well, it's getting traffic, a lot of traffic, like 
tens of thousands of visitors a month. It's getting traffic, so Google likes it. Why would you take it off? But I decided to go against that and removed it. Hmm. And um, was that because of a lack of relevance or because yeah. um, like you just, okay, so did you move them onto a different site and just start a new site with that content? Uh, yeah, I made down the road. I kept all the content, of course. Um, you know what? I'm just focused on this one site right now. I know it sounds easy to put all that on there, but it's still time and money. It's all there. I can use it down the road um, and it's possible. I've got enough niche sites just sitting around. <laughs> no, I've got no shortage of sites that, you know, are ready to, to try to grow if I ever get the time to do so. Last time I heard you speak, you were considering downsizing the portfolio and selling. Did you do that or have you kind of just some. kept those running? I sold two yeah, sites some. recently, two, two very, quite good sites. I tried selling a, a site that had had a recent drop sizable drop i want to sell it anyways that's always a dumb thing to do but i did anyway i didn't want to spend time fixing it it didn't sell and i even set the like people don't want a distress site the sites that sold mm -hmm. were doing great and they sold for a really good multiple and they sold they, they, one of them was like six figures and it sold like very quickly inside of a week mm -hmm. um wow for a good multiple. So A, there's this great market for sites still, but distress sites, at least for me, like nobody wanted to touch it. What kind of so multiples are you seeing it. right now? What's that? What kind of multiples are you seeing right now? I think I got like uh, 40. Okay, okay. Wow, that's that's good. Maybe that's 30, 37, yeah. 40, which I was quite happy about. I, 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 I took yeah. it. It wasn't like the best I ever got. Um, but I was I was happy about that. Yeah, that's really good. So I think a lot of people are talking about how they they're, they're saying that the market's down. Well, I mean, I guess it's a mixture of like interest rates and like you know the money's not flowing like it was, as well as the AI stuff. So it's, I'm glad to hear the multiples are still holding up strong. Yeah, I, actually, I think it was 37. I think I started at 40. We we decided to price it at 40 or 42, and I think ultimately at um, when it sold was 37. And I was I was happy about that. It was so. You know, that was, that was success, but you know, it was a successful site and people are willing to invest into, um, a site with good prospects. Yeah. Do they know it's yours when they're buying it? No, I, I do these, uh, I did these ones uh, anonymously. I didn't post my name on them. They know now after, as I've worked with them to transfer. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pretty, I'd be pretty happy if it was coming from you, you know, like it would make a difference, yeah. I think. That's worth, that's worth an extra month on the multiple. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it's worth an extra couple of points there. I, I've, I've sold sites with my name attached to them too. I don't know, I just thought I'd, I'd try it without this time, um, just under the radar. I didn't really write about it or it's not really part of, I don't really publicize the site sales too much, really. I'll mention it. I mean, I think... I think the longer I do this, it's a more and more important part of the whole business model. But, you know, at the same time, I'm, I'm really sort of a, I hold them long term. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up, but we'll, we'll, we'll briefly touch on uh, the Niche Site Summit again, which everyone you should sign up for is free. There's no reason not to. You get to hear from John, Tony Hill, uh, Scott DeLong, and a bunch of other people. But um, for example, I just started going to real life affiliate niche site events recently. So I went to Cold Broadbent's way in York. I'm gonna, uh, I was at, uh, Charles Float's Birmingham event. Um, are you going to be at any of the events? Can anyone see you in real life anywhere as well? You mentioned going to a, a niche relevant event, but you going to any of the, the niche site ones anytime soon. Can anyone, can we come see you in, in real life anytime? Uh, no, I don't have any plans right now, actually. Um, you know, if Mediavine holds their, um, I think they're 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 talking about something in January. I'll be going. It's a premier event. I'll I'll attend that for sure. I had a great time there. I have no other plans, unfortunately. I'm I'm sort of actually gonna get for my travel budget and time. You know, I I I have young kids and family, and I don't really want to like travel two weeks out of the month all year long. Otherwise, I'd hop around to all these fun events. Uh, so I'm mindful of that, but I'm really getting more and more involved in, in the actual, like my local business niche, my niche site. There's, there's quite a bit there and I think I'll help, but eventually I will attend some we'll of the other blogger events. We'll have to get you down to the UK. What's that? We'll have to get you down to get you over. 
Yeah. <laughs> so come to York. It's lovely. It's old. I'm not sure if you've been to York before. It's where affiliate gathering is. It's where uh, Carl yeah. Corbin holds it. Man, Carl's invited me twice and I feel so bad. I felt particularly bad the first year. I said, yeah, yeah, that's going to work. And then I, it didn't work. We ended up moving that very same weekend. And that uh. sucked because it looks and sounds like an amazing event. And then, you know, if, oh, if, I, if I tend something, uh, that would be a great one to go to. I agree. It looked really, really good. Awesome. Just we'll have to like get you down at some point. Titans everywhere, and we had a real good time. Like you, we got, had a you really guys nice both time. Went? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, well, we nice. both went up on the train. It was hilarious. Jamie was like running around. He he had like four minutes to get about half a mile right across <laughs> Kings Cross Station. I was sitting on the train like he's not going to make it. They rang the bell, and Jamie like jumps on, pouring. Himself. No like, way. Oh, my god it was so good oh i had yeah, i was so right. stressed trying to make that train but we made it it honestly the, the it. event was great fun but the partying afterwards was what made the event extra special it was such good fun i was yeah. i had to recover for about a week after but like, <laughs> after uh, after the amount of drinking that went on but it was good fun uh, like just you know it's great to see everyone there and uh, chat with people that are doing the same stuff that we do all day with this niche yeah, no doubt that's great yeah well thanks for reminder i i hope to get there it's it's a long haul for me though uh from vancouver but I, mm. I know it looks like a good one yeah well thank you for coming on john uh like i said you have the new site summit next month in october uh 25 plus speakers that are going to be there is free to attend if you don't you have to pay afterwards so incentives to to turn up on the spot and save yourself some cash you're going to have the knowledge imparted from john himself as well as a bunch of other people i believe i saw um you know uh, i think mike for uh, at niche down on twitter is there as i believe so as well uh, and a bunch of other people so that's uh, definitely an event to oh, go that's to interesting yeah i'd like to hear from um, him. yeah yeah super interesting guy um also john where can everyone else find you uh, fatsacksblog.com that's that's the site contact there email newsletter there uh reach out yep awesome and I, John's also I actually to... replied on my emails almost all of them so i like hearing nice. from folks so nice oh, cool. and john also uh, has a free course as well as a paid course it's not often open so if you do get the opportunity to uh visit the course when it is open i suggest you do it i was a paid customer uh before I, before i'd ever spoken to john I, I i bought the course and i gained a lot from it i'm very grateful to john for spending the time imparting his wisdom and so if you do get the chance it is time sensitive and so don't miss out next time it opens up john also has an excellent course uh, as well thank you very much for listening everyone and uh we'll be back for another episode soon Thank you again, John, for coming on. Really great to speak to you as well as like just to learn from someone who's just scaling serious content and has done stuff that I've never managed to scale to. It's super interesting. So yeah, thanks yeah, for your time, man. Thanks, John. Yeah, and thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Nice to meet you, Sam. Yeah, you too, John. Cheers, man. We'll chat to you soon. Hopefully see you in York. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <no. laughs> All right. <laughs>